little crack with this from tail. <laughs> How else could we get started to fire back up into some rookie wide receivers? Well, Sunday afternoon wide receiver talk. Yeah, we're gonna today. We're gonna we're gonna get into a little Christian Kirk first. Um, hard K, hard K with the with the Kirk, not to be confused with a Kurt. True. You know, don't you don't want to make those. Uh, <laughs> As he was dominating dominating the SEC for three years, he was telling everybody, "It's it's Kirk with a K." Everybody. So the highlights of his combine were a, were a four four seven forty. Um, he came in at what a five eleven two hundred. Exacto mundo. Exacto mundo, and then a, a strong bench press ref from the young man, mm -hmm. at, looking like a grown man with that twenty. Yeah, you can see it on the tape with the ridiculously good stiff arms, just pushing people by the face mask. Strong gun show and mush. <laughs> good mush. Boy, he's thick up. You gotta like that. Yeah, he's a, he's a thick, thick fellow there coming out the slot at you. He's got uh, all sorts of good parts and pieces to his game. He shows up at A and M in, in fifteen, I believe, and comes right out there and just crushes it's evident as soon as he steps on the field that he belongs and he's one of the better athletes on either side of the ball right off the rip he makes his presence felt he goes uh and plays arizona state six for a bucko six and a touchdown um he first then, game as a freshman first game and then he follows that up with you know four at, at ball state but i'm assuming i don't have that score in front of me four for 43 and a touchdown i'm assuming they probably blew him out probably didn't play too much in that game and then he comes right back with a six and eight an eight and a seven in the reception category and uh two games over a hundred a game at 77 and a game at 90 so just comes in there guns a blazing sure to help out his college dominator rocking that college that <laughs> breakout age rocking yeah, that breakout rocking age. the breakout age. Oh, the breakout age is definitely in the 90 plus percentile killing the breakout age crush that but so <laughs> that that's the kind of the 15 year comes right in makes his presence felt you guys want to uh get into these 16 years where the where the hype begins to ascend and keep building? Sure. I mean, whatever you whatever you got. This guy's just all around electrifying. I mean, he's he's a a chain mover who can also hit the big play. It's it's fun to watch. It's hard not to get excited about him. The only thing I can really knock him for is maybe the midriff, but I mean, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Zeke Elliott made that made that famous. I know. I don't really like it either. Okay. Um, I mean, well, the 2016 you work out. You do a lot of crunches. I can tell. Good right, job, buddy. Right. The Thanks. 20, the 2016, uh, Bama TD catch for me, the, the, the catch in the sun, I call it. Um, I, he, the concentration that it took to make that catch was ridiculous. And I, you could see that in a lot. It, he plays in traffic. Like you said, he comes out of the, out of the slot there, Casey, but he also, he's, he's all over the field. Yeah. I mean, you could, especially through his 2016, 2017, um, especially in 2017, not to get ahead of ourselves here, but as the, the players kind of decrease around him, the defense tries to focus on him, and he's literally yeah, all creative. over the fort. They He's coming out of the backfield. He's he's constantly in motion trying to get him get him separated. Freed but up. back to the catch in the sun against Bama, um, I saw an analyst try to use a video that said that wide receivers aren't supposed to try to catch the ball like this in the NFL. I'm not going to call any names out, um, but – I thought it was just a ridiculously good, high concentration catch. Looking back in the sun on a Saturday afternoon, the the analyst kind of brushed it off that the defender had his arm grabbed up. But not only is he working into the back of the end zone, trying to catch a ball dropping down, the defender's got him by an arm, so he's usually really just got a half of a hand and one arm out there. Right. He's looking back in the sun, makes a, makes a nice bread basket catch, dude's draped all over him. And I, if that catch is made on a Sunday... It's on ESPN. Oh, for sure. But then, you know, I got I thought it was a great catch, and I got an analyst trying to use that as a, as a clip, saying that you're you're not going to be you, able to touch work catch like that in touchdown college. catch. That's like, what you want to do in the NFL. You got to be able to work through the uh, the the contact. Yeah, all you, that all that the adversity that's going to be in front sure. of you. Well, that's right. what he that's what he was trying to say. He tried to use that clip and said, "Hey, well, this isn't going to work on Sunday." And I'm like, "Well, that works on Sunday all day long." To even make that play possible, he's playing Alabama in 16, which he's had a he had a nice career against Alabama the whole time he was there. Sure, did. very but solid career. He, he eats that cushion up off the rip to get into the position to score on the fade route into the sun here, and just Domit eats that cushion, gets leverage on the guy. All the guy, the reason the guy's holding his arm is because his he's he already beat. he's already got his back to him because he he burned him so bad exactly, and he's holding his arm and yeah. he, he he still comes away with a great now it was a great great little toss by Trevor Knight and a really and a dropped really it dropped the, it right in the bucket there sure but still like he's getting his arm held he burnt the guy up this is Bama as the benchmark of great competition and uh was, I thought that was a great play 
Yeah, I mean, well, that's a, that's a salt. That's a sixteen tape against Bama. So he's sitting there as a sophomore. There came right in. You know, didn't sh- didn't red shirt. So he's a very you know he, when you're playing Bama, you're playing against NFL defenders, right? Maybe not dude, across the board, but for the most part, you're playing against the best competition. Played him three times, right? Freshman year in fifteen went seven for ninety in the game. The second in sixteen, which you guys are talking about here, he went nine for fifty eight in that touchdown, right? And then in seventeen. Comes back with another four for fifty-two and another touchdown, which was, a, was an awesome little play on a scramble drill. Comes back, helps his quarterback out. Right, but like I said, in seventeen, and Casey will tell us who all left here in just a second. But in seventeen, he's really the only offensive playmaker. Right. So just to even Bunch get four rookie, for fifty in a touch right. against playing, Bama is huge. Because how many times do you see Bama <laughs> take away the other team's best player, right. a la Bill Belichick type move? Sure. But you can't take away Christian Kirk because no. they put him all over the place. I mean, they did a pretty good job in seventeen of taking away what he does best because it's a lot of screen passes and they really minimized his after the catch ability. And which is really he is a strong factor of his game that we'll, I'm sure we'll get to in, in depth here in a minute. But I mean, the Alabama did a good job, but he still he still broke off a touchdown. You know, right. he still got it done for his team and, and for, yeah. for your stats. And, and that touchdown in 17, it's a nice scramble drill by him again, helping his freshman quarterback out. Oh, what a sick catch! And, it was. A, and worked into the back of the end zone and then tight saw, rope the, tight, yeah. tight rope the sideline came back to the ball caught the ball out of si- out of bounds and kept a foot inbounds oh it was like so two was a, yards out of bounds right. he was literally got parallel with the in, ground think, almost yeah. and, and so it was eventually catch. eventually got his in that game now well, it's not as good as the other games that he had against alabama but that's still a nice career slate against the benchmark for solid competition true um so he has he has a, a productive basically year all around every time these guys been on the field absolutely he's had 80 catches 80 well, somebody got that in front of him uh 80 83 and 71 but then seven nine and ten touchdowns respectively so for a total of 26 touchdowns strong and strong, this has been this strong. has been like post johnny manziel texas a&m we took a step back as an offense kind of thing sure you know those those numbers might not be ridiculous but this is a Five foot ten, two hundred pound man who's running around in the SEC, getting knocked down by linebackers all the time, yeah. returning punts, returning kicks, and he just he's he just keeps coming. He he's like Jay Wayne said, he's super solid for two hundred pounds and twenty bench reps. Looks like a running back. He looks he looks like a running back, and I mean I just he's such a safe player moving from the college to the NFL game because he's not is he does it's not a finesse game with him, but he's not. Um, it's not all power either. You know, right. the vision is there with the kickoffs, obviously, and the punt returns. The vision is there. He's one of the and, best kick returner, punt returners in the nation. Him and him and Pettis are sure. two of the best. Right. And what I like about it, and I obviously you would love to see the three cone drills and then the, the shuttles and all that from this from the uh, combine to be lower numbers. But what I like about it is when a guy like this who's just been tearing up defenses, he's impossible to cover, he's impossible to hardly even tackle, and then he goes to the combine and he doesn't blow the doors off with numbers. Right. Just like a Dalvin Cook. You know what I mean? It's like, all right, well. It's maybe, still a solid 40. Right, right. Solid, solid, which is great because you talk about a potential slot guy, but he's got the long speed to go with it. Right. And well, that's, so, I mean, I just, I really love Christian that's, Kirk. That's as why a I have prospect. him, you know, up. Up in that top five area, probably sitting at five, maybe just a, a He's, scooch ahead of Anthony Miller for me. But just because I feel like he is really safe. like He's I, leading that second tier of receivers after right. the big four. I feel like I could get – you're going to get the kick and punt return stuff out of him, and he's going to be a slot guy, and, and he, he plays the screen game well. That whip that if he I had has, a nickel is, for every screen and whip he caught. Oh, that, yeah. That whip game is proper, and you can't do anything about it. He eats you up with that. And then, again – his short to intermediate stuff is is fantastic. That's what you love about his game, and the run after the catch is awesome. But then he has plus ability to stretch the field for you, right? Mm-hmm. Which how could you, I just feel like it's it's just a nice layup of a player to to equate to scoring fantasy points for you. Now, obviously, we get into landing spots and all that, and all these guys can slide up a couple of pegs depending on the situation that they land in. But I feel like Kirk is is pretty safe and and uh, insulated in his in his little area about what he's going to do for your team and, and how he's going to put fantasy points on, on your squad. I would agree with that. I, I, I didn't see him pressed a ton, but when he was pressed, he's pretty physical. If you're physical. in the slot, you're not going to get pressed. Yeah, that's true. Tough to be pressed. He played outside every once in a while. Um, but, I mean, he's really fast off the line of scrimmage. Like He's quick at the snap of the ball. The routes are pretty crisp, as you were mentioning. Like You can't guard that whip. Um, 
they gave him a bunch of like third and short screen passes that he just turned. You know, he got those three to four yards. Yeah, like, it was like a running play basically for them. Which, I mean, he's basically a running back after he catches the ball. I love him over the middle of the field. No fear. Um, looked awesome on a, on a crossing route or a deep crossing route. He'll go down super low and dig a ball yeah, low got, out of the ground. I got that. As, oops, sorry. Ooh, a little squeaky there. <laughs> need, a, need some WD. <laughs> but I got that as one of my uh, one of my notes too. He'll 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 dig it out the dirt, which you gotta like to see that. Right. You need to see the replay to make sure he still caught it and yeah. he's got those hands underneath it. It's really nice. Um, he he works well in in the tight spaces. There's that play where uh, he was running that. He was from the slot and it was kind of like a. I don't know what you call it. The running backs run it sometimes. Where it, it's like so a, it was 17, and they're, design, they're trying to figure out ways to get the ball in his hands and get coverage off of him and kind of disguise him a little bit. He lines up in the backfield. And the Wake Forest game or is it Arkansas? Yeah, he, I, don't, I don't know. It's, but it's a Texas route, basically. Right. Kind it's, of an it angle. Is, it's the Wake right. Forest game, but he is in the angle, backfield. He's yeah. straight up beside the quarterback. Yeah, and he runs that little angle He runs route. the angle. And the and ball when, gets on him quick. Right. Right when he makes his move off, off, off his cut to come back into the middle of the field, the ball's out and in his ear hole. Right. And, and he's, he beats his man. He gets in front of him. and The reactionary skills to get your hands up and catch it off of his helmet as yeah. it's on him because he was a little late getting his head around. No, it, yeah, it literally hit him in the face mask. Right. And it's that the concentration again. That's the, one of many plays that I saw that just highlights this guy's concentration. And we, we try to find guys that, you know, like the spatial awareness that Casey talks about and that type of stuff. The, the quote unquote gamers that the you know, the straight metric guys don't believe in that you, it matters when you put it, when you can put it all together, right. you know, and this, this guy, like you said, he's got no fear over the middle. Um, and I mentioned this, like the 2017, they literally are moving this guy all over the place. He's in the backfield. He's steady in motion. He looks like he's probably running 10 miles every football game, but because they're trying to get him away from the defense, they're just focusing on this guy right. who, how many times you see a defense focus on a slot guy. But the cool thing about Christian Kirk is when I was listening to Sigmund Bloom's podcast, when he had Matt Harmon on, Matt Harmon would, you know, his access through the NFL network. He said that he interviewed Christian Kirk and Christian Kirk, he Matt Harmon verbatim was like, Kirk is adamant that he can play outside and he wants to, and he's you know he he's not just a slot guy. And of course, the wide receivers not gonna get to pick that. The coaching staff will tell him where to play in yeah. the NFL. He's got he'll have bosses, but just the mindset of not only that's what I do. I have the intention of being able to play everywhere, and I want to be a number he's one. He's got enough I, size and speed to go outside. Right. He he played everywhere in 2017 because he had yeah, to. Well, they, they were mixing it up. It's because in 16 you have a, a squad that's those receiver rooms is Ricky Ricky Seals Jones, which NFL you know, tight say, end. Say what you want about him, but I mean he's in the NFL right now playing, and some people are hopeful that he's going to convert to a nice tight end. Sure. At some point, you got Josh Reynolds, who is a, was one of the best ball trackers, deep threats in the game last year which and stretched on, the defense deep right and then you got speedy Knoll, who, mm -hmm. who was it was a pretty solid uh college player and trevor knight was a transfer from oklahoma who'd played many a big college games on a saturday i don't love trevor knight's game but so now this, you, this is just a guy who's been around knows what to do exactly a quality quarterback in the college level and right. then you slip over to 17 you got freshmen you got a, in you the got ball. a bunch of yeah a bunch of freshmen thrown in the ball he becomes kind of the leader in the locker room and in, in, in the wide receiver room kind of deal mm -hmm. Um, and like you said, we're, they're moving him all around, trying to get him a little bit more involved uh, and get the defenses away from him. And, and he was the offense, right. like Jay Wayne said on third and two, like on second and ten, third and ten. Anytime you needed yards, it was throwing it. They were throwing it to Kirk. Absolutely. Right. So and, and he's got that long build up speed, man. I just love the the, the chain moving ability combined with the lid lifting yeah. aspect of his game. It's not quite. He's not quite as explosive as like a a, a, a Washington, right? But it's it's still pretty impressive how he can pop that thing off. And I mentioned that, you know, just his build looks like he looks like a running back, and that's definitely the case with the ball in his hands. It's probably one of the best aspects of his game. He's got that Jarvis Landry aggression after the catch. It's fun to watch. He's great in traffic. Just put him in a punt return situation. I know. That's yeah. basically what it is. <laughs> yeah. Like, when he's in traffic, after the catch, you, you think he's about to get tackled, and he's got one more juke, one more cut to just spring more yards. Mm -hmm. And then he'll stiff arm you and lower that shoulder. But, like, he rarely takes a big hit at the same time. So, it's just Yeah, it's yeah he's really, not ducking out of bounds either. Right. Well, like, in the in the screen game in that Wake Forest, uh, he's he's got a nice little screen for a TD from the nine, gets a hand catch. Gets the block set up upfield, uses it uses a cut to set up one block and, and move downfield, and then he stiff arms Jesse Bates, who's a one of the you know a pretty decent prospect, maybe a one day, of the top a day two, day three yeah. kind of prospect at, at at defensive back or safety. Just 
plants a stiff arm in his face for, for a Put nice Put him score. to the ground. And that was a silly stiff arm. Then he tippy toes down the sideline for a huge TD, trailing in by 10 into the third quarter there. And, you know, nice nice uh, work for his team there. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's just got good speed to get to the edge. It's just, he's just a joy to watch, man. And then another thing, one last thing I'll say, is that there's solid, consistent effort in the blocking. I enjoyed watching him block. He sprung some big runs. He's, he's definitely an efforter. He's a high-motor guy who's going to bring it every day for his teammates and his team, and, and I, I'm I'm excited about putting him on my team. Yeah. Sure. I'll end up with the clutch thing. I mean, he's against Arkansas in the in the, yeah. the overtime game. He's the t- he's getting the touchdowns in overtime. He's returning the hundred yard kickoff to put him in overtime. He's 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 the well, he's the clutch player. To start in that in that Arkansas game, you see everything you want to see from him. You see there's a there's a play. It's the first possession of the game. It's like third and six. There's a freshman quarterback in there. He runs a little ten yard hitch to the first down on third and six or whatever oh i know where you're going with this thank and you for bringing this up kinda, before we got out kind of works to the middle of the field there yeah because he sees it, it's zone coverage he sees it zone he sits down there there's two three guys around him so he keeps working instead of just sitting in that zone waiting for guys to close down around him he keeps working to an open spot on the field well now he looks back and sees his quarterback who's a true sure. freshman rolling right yeah so he breaks away and starts rolling right with his guy Gives him a wide open play for a huge touchdown in this game, which was a barn burner. Yeah. And, you know, helps out his young quarterback, does everything you want him to see. It's a smart route to start with to, to keep it moving from, from that first down. To work down that mark. zone. And yeah. then to, to recognize and, and bail his quarterback out and play that kind of schoolyard ball yeah. is, is fantastic I'm from so, him. I'm so glad you brought that play and up. And then a huge kickoff return. I almost to forgot. Set up overtime. That was, I, that was one of the funniest parts about once you get in there and really study Christian Kirk some with the film, you. More often than I've heard for any wide receiver, the the the, the play by play guy on TV kept keeps saying blown coverage. You know, oh the look at the he breaks wide open blown coverage. But it was Christian Kirk breaking the coverage down like you just right. described, working it back towards the middle of the field, seeing his quarterback get flushed out, then breaking into a wide open space in the, yeah. in the on, down the sidelines to catch that ball, and it made it look easy. And sure, the way this camera angles can set up, it's hard to tell sometimes, and it just looks like a blown coverage. But over and over and over with some of the big plays from Christian Kirk, you just see that he broke them down. Versus, versus the defense necessarily making yeah. a mistake, an unforced error, if you will, like we're talking about tennis. Like he's, it wasn't an unforced error. Christian Kirk made you do that yeah. over and over and over again. He gets, he breaks a touchdown for overtime, then he scores the a touchdown in overtime to give his team the victory, I believe, on a, on a nice little out route and just completely burns burns oh, his yeah, man in one on one coverage and slot and corner route. The, really, the guy throws his uh, the guy throws a nice ball to the outside where only he could get him, but he. The way he played his man and, and screened his man on the little out, there was no chance he could get to him, set it up well. Same thing in the Wake Forest game. He comes back and, and gets his team a touchdown, I think, with, let's see here, with with five minutes to go, gives his team the lead in the fourth quarter with a, with a nice little uh, kind of fake post corner route here, just doesn't even break stride, kind of subtle, eats up the cushion that the defender gave him is about seven yards, eats him up, gives him just a little... Subtle gear down and two pokes inside like he's hitting the post and then just roasts him back to the corner wide open for a touchdown. Boom. And it was just like you, you, there's all sorts of great the, pieces and parts of this game. The screen game's good. He's got routes like that. He can beat you deep over the top. Right. You need a punt return in the clutch. You need a kick return in the clutch. Boom, Whatever boom, you need boom. Him to do, he can and come another to the shot of rumple. You can hand it to him. He's going to be in Madden. He's going to have a high awareness rating. Sure. That's what I like about the cat. All right. Well, let's get down to brass taxes here. So the top, the top four uh, rookie wide receivers, you can kind of argue any way you want to go, but it's Cortland Sutton, Calvin Ridley, DJ Moore, and... and, and uh, Not in that order, just naming them. Yeah. Washington, Washington, right? Washington. So just naming the four off. Is is Kirk, does he slide into the top so five for I, you guys? I mentioned when, at one point when I was telling you why I liked him and why I mentioned that he slid into the top five for me. Yeah. Um, just because of the reasons of that... He is. He's probably going to work from the slot. He's a great slot guy. He can do everything you want him to do from the slot. The short and intermediate parts of his game are fantastic. I love all the routes that he can run. I love the whip route. I love the screen game that he has. So he can do everything you need him to do from that area of the field. And then it's the plus, the deep plays, and right. and the vertical speed puts it over the top In the for open me. Open field and to, after the catch. Sure, but that that comes his. along with being a good slot receiver. That all kind of goes. You, yeah. If you're, if you're, you know, fair. 
I could, I'm agree. I'm, I'm going to completely agree with that as well. Just uh, for me, it's a safety factor. Like there's no chance that Christian Kirk isn't a productive NFL wide receiver. I think that there's a potential for the, you know, the upside on maybe like a ESB or a Dion Kane that we're going to talk about in a minute. And Equinemius St. Brown, for those of you guys not aware on that ESB reference yet, like there's maybe some potential number one receiver upside on some of those two guys that, maybe works out yeah. you know for your for your fantasy team because remember we're not building real nfl teams here my fantasy team i know i can cancel i know that i can t- can lean on christian kirk if i was to put a spot and make and draft him in a rookie draft put some equity into him on my team it's going to pay off right like there's no chance that this guy's not going to be a good nfl wide receiver he may not be a hall of famer but he is going to be productive, no uh, doubt about it. Absolutely. And we talked about uh, kind of landing spots just a little while ago. And any of these guys are susceptible to moving up or down, depending on That's a prerequisite the that, for right. that conversation. But, you know, I liked Anthony Miller a good bit. I think Anthony Miller does a lot of stuff. He's he's tenacious, a little bit different build, um, but just, a, just worked for everything. Wasn't a, a huge recruit, didn't come in as a freshman, had to, you know, take everything that Anthony Miller got. And he plays that way. He's got that kind of mentality about him. And I liked Anthony Miller. And then I watched Kirk and I just like the safety factor. He's two years younger than Anthony Miller, a little bigger. I just, I like played against a little bit better competition. Right. But Anthony Miller did his thing and consistently crushed his competition. But I, I, I like, I feel very, for whatever reason, deep in my plums, I just feel (laughs) extremely safe drafting Kirk. Sure. I don't not feel safe drafting Miller. I think if you want to draft Miller at five as your five guy, like that's kind of where I have these two guys. I have them at kind of five and six right now. And, and, but with Kirk as the advantage, uh, over Anthony Miller right now. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think I could agree with that. I like Anthony Miller as much as the next guy, but I, I think I have to slide Kurt in here at five. So uh, I think that'll wrap up old Christian. Yeah, sure. Well, you, you can't really leave it. I mean, Golden Tate, right? I mean, I, I just had to throw that name. Everybody knows that everybody said it is. So if you haven't heard it yet and you're listening to us for your number one most used player comp for this comp. guy, the, mo- the most used oh, player comp. Oh, we love comp, the comps. Right. What's the comps? What's your comp? Because so, if you can't comp him, then right. So, But he he's he's as close to uh, putting a Golden Tate, of a rookie Golden Tate on your team as anybody in this draft. Yeah, All Golden right, Tate or, or a Jarvis Landry little kind Jarvis, of guy. Li- right. Little Jarvis right. in him, Which, but with some explosiveness. Some, some people don't like that guy. I love that but guy. I want that guy on my Give me team. those it's catches. Safe, safe points for me. As, as, yeah. As, as, Give me those catches and a, guy, and a guy that's hard to be tackled. So if he can catch it and he's hard to tackle, then you um, the yak will make up for the A dot. Let's roll. Exactly. <laughs> Great point to end on there. The yak will make up for the A dot if the A dot even matters. Get out of it here doesn't. with that. All right. Well, let's go to break. We'll grab another beer. We'll be back when we're married to the game podcast. For your pleasure. Pleasurable, pleasurable. <laughs> 